So let's go through the process of the Diffie-Hellman-Merkel key exchange. Uh, so remember the idea, the really important idea here is that we've got to imagine that there's an eavesdropper uh, in the middle here, listening in to anything that Alice and Bob say to each other. And so what they're going to try to do is establish a shared number, a shared number that they can use as an encryption key. Uh, and they're going to try to come up with that without Eve being able to deduce it. So let's see how that works. So Alice and Bob start out by sharing a generator and a prime. Uh, these are shared information and it's fine and Eve is going to know what these are. Now each of them is going to pick a, secretly pick a number of their own. So I'm going to have Alice pick 8 and Bob pick 6, uh, but they could pick any number they want and most importantly, only they know it. So Bob and Eve, neither of them know Alice's number and neither Alice or Eve knows Bob's number. So each Alice and Bob are now going to uh, compute generator to the n mod p. So in this case, for Alice, it's going to be 3 to the 8th mod 17. S so let's go ahead and figure out what that is. So I'm going to calculate 3 to the 8th power. 3 to the 8th power is 6561 and now I'm going to divide that by 17 and get this decimal. Um, I want to take away the whole part, so I'm going to subtract 385 and multiply by 17 to get the remainder, to get the modulus. And so my modulus, or Alice's modulus, is 16. So Alice's, Alice's number is 16. Now Bob is going to do the same thing with his secret number. So he's going to take generator to the n mod 17. Uh, and this one comes out to be 15. So now comes the important part. Alice is going to send her number to Bob, and Bob is going to send his number to Alice. So Eve is going to be able to intercept those. But it's really important because it's hard to, s to figure out if I asked you 3 to the n mod 17 is 16, it would be hard for you to find n. The only way to do it is to just try a bunch of values. There's no more efficient way to do that. And uh, mod 17, that's not that hard, but if we had a prime number here instead of 17 that was, say, you know, 100 digits long, uh, it would be practically impossible for you to try out all values. Uh, and that is where the security of this method lies, in the difficulty of figuring out these secret numbers from these numbers that are exchanged. So again, uh, Bob... Oops, there we are. Uh, so, so, so Bob just acquired, uh, sorry, Alice just acquired Bob's secret number of 15, and, and Bob just acquired Alice's secret number of, or sorry, not secret number, Alice's secret, uh, share, um, exchanging number of 16. I don't know what it's actually called. We'll call it exchanging number. Right, so, so Alice sent her number of 16 to Bob, Bob sent his number of 15 to Alice, so now they each have the other's number. So now each of the, them are going to take the number that they just received and raise it to the power of their secret number. So remember Alice's secret number was 8. So she's going to calculate 15 to the 8th mod 17 while Bob is going to take Alice's number, raise it to his secret number of 6 mod 17. And if we do that, let's see what we get. 15 to the 8th is a really big number, divided by 17. Oh, you know, I'm going to have a little hard time doing this by uh, using this calculator. So I'm, I, uh, I actually already computed this using a cool little website which lets me calculate these out. Uh, and this value turns out to be 1 and this value also turns out to be 1. And this is based on uh, that uh, modular exponent power rule, uh, which says that these things are, are going to end up being the same. And what's great is that the eavesdropper Eve has no way of deducing this number from the information that was exchanged.